time for another first drives with Fred and today I am driving a brand new Defender 90. This is the brand new Land Rover. It's the two door short wheelbase and we're going to go for a little drive. We're going to talk about the history of Land Rover and also whether or not this Land Rover deserves the Defender name. Come on. This is the new 2021 Defender. This is the Defender 90, so that means it's the short wheelbase two door. It is a vehicle that has kind of been around a long time, but this is the latest version of it. So like the Defender name has been around a long time. I'm gonna start off by just going through the price sheet here. Uh, this is a 2021 Defender 90 first edition. Uh, Pangea green, so it's green, but it has a white top. Um, it has a three liter V6 gas engine, 395 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque, eight speed automatic transmission, all wheel drive with two speed twin speed transfer box, so two speed transfer case. I believe, I actually believe this has like a 2.9 low range, so pretty good low range. Um, all wheel drive, uh, electric power assist steering, which is kind of everything has electric power steering these days. Terrain response with selectable driving and off-road modes, hill descent control, air suspension, adaptive dynamics, 20 inch wheels. So this has a really big wheel, probably to clear a really big brake. And, but it does have an all-terrain tire, an off-road tire, which is not, I mean, it's not a mud tire. It's kind of an all-terrain. Uh, LED headlights, fog lights, rain sensing wipers, yada, yada, two zone climate control, cabin lighting clear sight interior rear view mirror. Oh, so it has a rear view mirror that if you flip this button on the back of it, it goes from an actual mirror to a camera screen. And there's actually this like fin on the back of the top that has a little camera in it. Um, and it has a really big sunroof. Let me open this sunroof up. So the sunroof goes all the way back there. The, it's actually, the sunroof is better for the rear seat than the front seat. Cause like most of my head is still under this roof. My one arm is out, but it's like almost most of the back seat. It's kind of like this big open area, but it's not really over the driver and passenger up front. Most of it's over the people in the back. So I'm gonna close that back up because we're gonna go for a little drive. And it has, um, make some noise while we're recording. Oh, the other thing, this has a 40, 20, 40, or yeah, 40, 20, 40 split front. Like, look at this. This is the giant middle seat of the front of this thing. I'm gonna grab the camera and move it here to show you. This, it has like this giant jump seat. And it's kind of weird because it's like higher than the driver and passenger seat, but it does have a seat belt. Um, you could put somebody up here in the middle, in the front, and there's a reason why Land Rover kind of does this. It's kind of a throwback to original Land Rovers, where like the very first prototype, you could you would sit in the middle, had a steering wheel in the middle. Um, but the thing that's weird about this is that when it's folded down, there's cup holders, but when it's flipped up, there's there's like no place to put your cup. I mean, it is kind of, it's neat, it's, it's usable, but it's not really uh, convenient if you have a coffee cup. Sorry, whoa. But check this out. Uh, yes, this is a Bronco mug, but there's a little cubby right here in the dash that that coffee cup happens to fit in pretty good. It does have a lid, so it doesn't spill. And then there's a big cubby over here on this side, glove box, but not as many cup holders as us fat coffee drinking Americans like. Let's go for a little drive. I'm gonna fold this thing back down. Um, the dash or the con transmission controller is a shifter knob right here. You actually, there's a button on the back of it. You have to push that button in order to engage any gear. Uh, so you can't just grab it and pull it back. That doesn't give you drive. You have to push this, pull it back, and it goes to D, or you push it and go forward to get reverse. It's a little bit wonky, if, like the first couple times you use it, but before you know it, 
it's a piece of cake. So I'm back out of here. I'm gonna take these glasses off because I'm gonna make everything blurry. So the Land Rover brand was developed shortly after World War II, pretty much right after World War II, um, in Great Britain, England. And part of the reason was that after the war, the British government wanted businesses that could help the country rebuild. And so they weren't just looking for like luxury cars, they were looking for useful vehicles. And Land Rover, the guys that invented the Land Rover, um, one of the first vehicles that he had was based off of a military Jeep, probably an MB or Ford GPW. And he was using it on his farm and came up with this idea to build a vehicle that was useful on farms and useful basically in rebuilding the country. And the first one had kind of like a Jeep chassis but they had their own body and it had the seat in the middle with a steering wheel in the middle and that's kind of normal if you think about farm equipment where most of the time you sit in the middle and then you can easily see either sides of the field or you can see the fences maybe you're in an orchard you can like easily check trees and everything but they also kind of figured out pretty quickly that it was more work than it was worth to have the steering wheel in the middle. So they eventually moved it off to the right side, which was where like Great Britain and England still drives on the right side. Um, and eventually they also started offering them with steering wheels on the left side for the rest of the world. Now, the original Land Rovers were called series vehicles. I don't know if they were actually called series vehicles, but they became known as series vehicles, series one, series two, series three. And the original ones had the headlights in the middle of the grill, not the middle middle, but like there was like these big fender bonnet things, not bonnet, bonnet's the hood, but fender things. And in between those on either side of the radiator grill were the headlights. That was up until the series three. And in the series three, they moved the headlights out onto the fenders and eventually that kind of morphed into the Defender. So it doesn't really have anything to do with having the lights on the fenders, on the fenders, but, um, or maybe it does. I don't really know. That's a good question. Did Defender come from putting the lights on the, the, the fenders? Probably not. Uh, so they had these series Land Rovers. They had them from the 40s up until like the 70s. And in the 70s, Land Rover developed this other vehicle known as the Range Rover. The Range Rover was kind of the high end luxury Land Rover. It was the, think of it as like the Lexus to the Toyota, the GMC to the Chevrolet, the Infiniti to the Nissan. It was kind of their luxury version of the Land Rover. Because up until then, Land Rover was like this farm truck. It was the old Chevy pickup truck of England where like you or the old F-150, like the thing where you would put a bale of hay and a baby pig in the back and like a truckload of horse manure or whatever. Like the Land Rover was used like a shovel and it was simple like a shovel. It had a, a steel frame, an aluminum body because at the time they developed it, uh, steel was kind of hard to come by because it was right after the war. And aluminum, I. I think that they probably got some aluminum from an airplane builder or factory that maybe they were shutting down because they didn't need bombers and big planes as much anymore. Um, because a lot of the original Land Rovers were a kind of a green color that was actually leftover airplane paint. Or so I am told. Which is kind of neat because this is a green Land Rover too. So maybe this is kind of a throwback to those original Defenders. Now, uh, you may think, well, why would you build an aluminum body? That's got to be more expensive. I don't know that at the time it was more expensive. And it was probably great because in Great Britain and England, the weather can be wet, cloudy, and having an aluminum bodied 4x4 probably helped protect it from rusting away. So, good ideas. Over the years, they had this series rovers. They were body on frame, leaf sprung, solid axles, stick axles, much like every other kind of 50s, 60s, 70s off-road vehicle where it was 
uh, straight axles, leaf sprung, spring under, audio and frame, <clears throat> much like the Jeep, the Land Cruiser, a lot of those vehicles were all that kind of same style. And then in around the 70s, Land Rover comes out with Range Rover. Range Rover, this fancy truck, um, it's developed more for maybe day-to-day -day use and less farm use. Like, it's probably the truck that the Queen drove. Except that I think the Queen probably has every Land Rover ever. She's probably got a collection of them. In fact, I read somewhere that the Queen actually served in the military for a little bit, and as part of her uh, tour, she was a mechanic, which is kind of neat. The Queen of England likes to work on stuff, which if you uh, know any jokes about Land Rovers, you probably know you have to work on them a bunch. All right, I'm kidding. I'm just poking jokes at, at Land Rovers. I do really like Land Rovers. Um, I have a, a series Land Rover project. It's not a legit Land Rover. It's kind of like a bunch of parts kind of cobbled together, uh, but it it's pretty cool. In fact, I'll show you that later in this video. Um, so eventually Land Rover develops this Range Rover, it's still on solid axle, still body on frame, still aluminum body. However, instead of leaf springs, they went to coil springs with a link suspension. In fact, I think it's like a radius arm front and kind of like a four, three link with like an upper wishbone rear. Um, and it rode a lot better. Uh, and eventually Land Rover decided it was time to re redesign their series rig and they developed this thing called the Defender, which was the original Defender. And it was awesome. In fact, but the thing that they did was they stole the suspension from the Range Rover and put that under the series style body. So it's still, you could still look at it and be like, that's a Land Rover. It's got the square body sides. It's got... Um, kind of these like upper windows that like you see on here, like these kind of up, kind of skylight windows up in the corners. Um, it had the look, but it rode better and it worked better because it had kind of a coil spring suspension. Uh, now, when you build a truck with a coil spring suspension, um, people drive them faster because they ride better and you could have other issues, uh, but for the most part, developing the very first Defender, which I think was in like the probably early 80s, the, um, the design utilized Range Rover suspension. And the reason I bring that up is because this Defender, which is pretty much a step away from that first Defender and all those series Rovers because it's not uh, stick axles, it's independent front and rear, it's air suspension. This suspension is developed, or has been developed from the Range Rover. So even though you might think that this is nothing at all like an old Defender, straight off the bat, it is like a Defender because they basically are taking that old recipe of develop a suspension in our high-end vehicle and then bring it down to our more utilitarian, more off-road vehicle. And this is a pretty, like, rugged version like this is not like the Range Rovers this has rubber floor mats seats that are easy to clean whether you have a dog or a dirty messy kid or whatever um, this is a much more rugged off-road vehicle than the Range Rovers however this vehicle is gonna make a lot of people angry because it is not the old-school Defender that a lot of people love and covet and I say covet because like in America, they are like older defenders, in fact, all older Land Rovers have kind of just shot up in value. People really want that old safari style, that crossing the Kalahari, that jungles of Indonesia look where like you have this rugged camel trophy look of a vehicle. And so they've, they've, they've gone through the roof. They're really expensive. Um, so I guess the point of my story is that even though this is a very different vehicle, it still has some of that original Defender DNA because of the recipe that they use. So we know that this vehicle has some old school DNA, but does it, 
does it hold up to the Defender name? Well, <clears throat> this one has a V6, but it has a lot of power. It's like pretty aggressive and fun to drive on the road. Um, there is a V8 model, which is almost twice as expensive, uh, which seems crazy that if you go from a V6 to a V8, you double the price and you get over a hundred grand. But if you look at a lot of the market of other vehicles, like if you look at a Wrangler, you wanna buy a stock four cylinder or V6 Wrangler, and then you wanna jump up to that 392 Wrangler, it's gonna be almost twice as expensive. So, and I mean, we could talk about how expensive cars are all day long. It's not fun to talk about. It's kind of depressing because everything's really expensive these days. Um, I think this Defender on its own is, it's a great vehicle. I'm gonna call it a truck. Um, it's a great truck. Now, a lot of people don't like when I call vehicles trucks that don't actually have a pickup bed, but uh, whatever, I'm not gonna get hung up on semantics. This is a cool truck. It's fun to drive. It has a big sunroof. It doesn't have a removable top like earlier Land Rovers and Defenders have. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, the body styling has little cues to the early one, but it's pretty much a step away from the old Land Rover Defender that people have come to love. Um, but on its own, it's a really cool vehicle. Full independent suspension, which you might say, well, I don't want that. But if you look at a lot of the UTVs and side-by-sides these days, they have that. Uh, a incredibly quick and well-performing engine and transmission. It sounds good for a V6, come on. Like, it's not like it's a anemic, boring V6. Like, this thing is fun to drive. And like, if you could get your hands on the V8 two-door, I bet it would be awesome. <clears throat> um, Off-road, it has low, low gears in a transfer case. It has a two-speed transfer case. Apparently, it has a rear locker that's an automatic locker that also works as a limited slip, which tells me it's some sort of locking differential that has clutches in it, and the vehicle decides how much of the clutch to engage in order to equally disperse power to each wheel. And then the front doesn't have a locker, but it has some sort of brake-based traction control. I did a little bit of light off-roading in it and was impressed on what it could do like on steep, loose, gravelly hill climbs. Uh, the wheels didn't really break loose and it has a lot of off-road modes within the center screen here. Um, where would I place this thing? I'm not gonna go buy a Defender, well A, because they're expensive, but B, like I wouldn't go buy a Defender and think of building it like as an extreme off-road rock crawling machine. But I think that they're, it's a really fun car to drive on the road. In fact, I'm like hauling the mail down this like weavy country road and it's awesome. It sticks to the road, it corners well, it launches well. Um, Overall, I think the Defender is going to make Defender fans upset because it doesn't look and act the way the old Defenders do. It has a lot of screens. It has like, it has hardly any wind noise. It's basically a more refined version. This is closer to what I would expect a Range Rover to be than something that they would call the Defender. I think overall, I really enjoy this vehicle and um, it's not the Defender that I was looking for or hoping for but it's it's its own thing it's its own breed it's its own animal it's kind of like when Toyota developed the FJ Cruiser and everybody said well that's not a Land Cruiser it's like yeah it's not it's its own thing unfortunately Land Rover named this the Defender and said so there's going to be a lot of Defender fans that are like, well, that's not a Defender. That doesn't have solid axles. And and I think that's the part that's tricky is there's a lot of people that were expecting a new version of the old truck. And they got a new truck that has the name of the old truck. So 
Uh, <clears throat> but it's still a good truck. It's still, and I think for the market, unfortunately, this is going to fulfill the market of all the people that want like a fun, fast, street driving SUV that they can also do some light off-roading with. I feel bad for the farmers of Great Britain because now they have to figure out where they're going to put that baby lamb that they just found out in the field that's covered in muck and they need to get it back to the barn to keep it warm and they they can buy this new Land Rover that's kind of a high-end nice car or do they switch brands and buy something that's like a Toyota Hilux or a Chevy Silverado? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this back to the shop and I'm gonna park it next to my old Land Rover and we're gonna do a little bit of design comparison between the two. I feel like there's some design cues between the old Land Rover and this that most people don't recognize because they probably don't see them side by side. Um, the issue of course is that A, my old Land Rover doesn't run so I gotta get this thing in the back sh backyard next to it. And B, um, it doesn't really matter how much I show that these things look alike, there's still gonna be people that are not going to appreciate it. And I think that's the problem is that even though it has the Defender name, it's very different from the old Defenders. And a lot of people uh, will never accept that as being, as this being a new version of the old truck. All right, here we go. Here's the Defender. Green, white roof, no removable top. And here is my Series Rover. Notice it's a Series 2 because it has two headlights. Um, once I went to Defender, the headlights were out on the fenders. This does have holes for turn signals on the fenders, but it is still a Series. This one's kind of a wonky machine because it's on a different frame. Um, here you can see those like high windows which the new Defender also has so there's definitely design cues on this thing it's just it starts to get weird like when you look at the front let's come up here definitely different um, but here's the thing that I was talking about on the rear like it looks like they just like they made this thing out of a piece of cake and they just cut it right off. But when you walk over here and you look at this Series Rover, it's kind of the same thing. It has a little bit of body line running down the side and then it's completely flat. And here's the other thing. Check out this body line and then look at this. does the same thing. So there's definitely design cues from the new Defender to the old, but it's still going to make people upset. Overall, I think it's a really cool truck. It's fun. Is it that? No, it's its own thing. And that's okay. Um, I think that's the problem is that people just have to understand it's its own thing. Like, I also feel the doors are huge. Like there's so much door that hangs down but like the old Land Rover it kind of had a rocker but the doors were also really square I like on the old Land Rovers how like the doors are set in where the new one it sticks out there's definitely things that the old one has that has its own style but the new one kind of came up with its own thing I'm going to drive it up the hill and take some more pictures, but that's pretty much it for this first drive with Fred. Thanks for tuning in. Kind of ran a little bit long, but I hope I answered some questions about the new Defender.